My name is James Kwaczynski, as you heard then, and I'm going to be talking about mathematics, and why it isn't as boring as you might think. And you might be wondering why I'm starting off with a negative title for a talk. And the reason is if you look at any academic journal on science communication, they all say that mathematics education in Australia is buggered. Australia is one of the only developed countries in the world where mathematics isn't compulsory to obtain a high school degree. Students don't understand the point of mathematics. So let me be clear, mathematics is important because it provides us with this quantitative framework to find insight and understanding. Modern technology will not exist without mathematics, nor would some of the buzzwords we see in today's schedule, such as big data or smart cities. This conference wouldn't exist without mathematics, whether you're talking something like organizing times and dates to the manipulation of binary numbers. So the John Monash Foundation can send us digital emails via the internet. Mathematics plays a fundamental role in the advancement of science and medicine. And I want to illustrate this point using examples from my own work. The first of which is to do with biological membrane shaping. Or this idea that inside animal cells, you have these special membranes which coat important parts of your cell. And the shape of such membranes is vital to the correct functioning of our cute little animals up here. So how do these membranes shape? They shape by means of special proteins, hundreds to thousands of which work together to give you a final membrane shape. But if these proteins don't work properly, they can cause human diseases such as Alzheimer's disease to even diseases which occur in the bladder and the prostate. So we use mathematics. And the power of mathematics is if you can write down an equation describing your phenomenon, then you can predict what that phenomenon is going to do. And with prediction, you can ask the bigger question. How can we control? How can we harness this phenomenon and make it work for us? Another example of work that I'm doing is to do with microbubbles. These very tiny bubbles, which can be used as ultrasound contrasting agents, brightening up parts of the body, but also as agents for targeted drug delivery. Ultrasound can be used to break apart microbubbles in the bloodstream delivering drugs, completely safe and non-invasive. But there's a big issue. Bubbles are unstable. You pour a glass of soda, the bubbles disappear very quickly. So to circumvent this, we can add molecules which keep the bubble together. And the same sort of thing happens inside our lungs. We have this molecular coating which keeps our alveoli intact. But there's a lot about this phenomenon we still don't understand. So again, we use mathematics. Fortunately, this work hasn't been published yet, so it still remains very top secret. <laughs> but again, in this instance, mathematics guides the development of ultrasound imaging and drug delivery technologies. As one last example, we look at the problem of brain swelling. This idea that if you get a really nasty knock to your head, your brain can expand in the most devastating of ways, as we can see in the left hemisphere here. Can we inject the quantitative prediction of mathematics into this problem? And the answer is it's certainly possible. It all starts with a very old result, 100-year-old result from statistical mechanics. We combine this with continuum mechanics, work with experimental biologists, and incorporate all of this information into a computational model. The result is a tool which can predict damage propagation in the brain due to initial trauma and subsequent swelling. So hopefully, by now, I've convinced you that mathematics can actually be pretty useful. It plays a fundamental role in that it is the first step. It is the theoretical foundation on which all future technologies are developed and refined. And yet, despite this very important role, mathematics is one of the more underfunded fields. And there's a reason for this. It is much easier for a team of experimentalists to argue for funding by promising short-term results in the order of five or even 10 years than a team of mathematicians who can only promise very long-term results in the order of 20, 50, sometimes even 100 plus years. So now we come to the crux of my presentation. We're talking about driving change, harnessing technology. And to this end, there's really one take-home message I want to emphasize, and it's the following. It's out of Australia's to be at the cutting edge of science and innovation, not only in the 21st century, but beyond. One of the safest bets is to invest in mathematics. The 21st century is going to be dominated
by complex problems, requiring an interdisciplinary outlook, involving expertise from so many different fields in science and medicine. And yet, despite all this complexity, there will be one aspect that will not change, and that is the need for mathematics. Thank you for your attention.